Right, stage one of making hypertension na Hyundai pleasant, nice, as attractive as it can be, and running properly is making it nice. Well, clean, basically. Snow foam, sponge, elbow grease, make the thing shiny. At least I don't mind touching it to work on it. And I've got a couple of ideas of why it's not working properly, but I'll come to that when it's clean. Snow firming it first of all, because some of this dirt is so ingrained. I just want to soften it all off before I try and tackle it with anything else. There's even plants growing by the windscreen wipers. First thing I'm going to try, in terms of getting this car running, thanks to a couple of comments people have made already, is the uh, battery might be too knackered to hold a charge, and that's why it's not revving over 3000. So, I'm going to take this battery off. I've just stolen the battery out of the uh, E-Class. That was no 6.5, this is no 7.5, which may be a tiny bit overpowering for this car, but I don't see it doing any damage. Well, designed to crank a big old 2.3 litre from the olden days. Let's see if this is better. Bing, bing, bing. That starts happily, doesn't it? That revs all the way. The light is still on the dashboard for the uh, charge light, so I suspect it may not be charging properly. There's nothing wrong with the MAF sensor, that's good. The fuel filter could probably still do with the changing anyway, because you know, that's not gonna be doing great business after so long with manky petrol. And that actually revs really well anyway, so I don't think I even need to drain it, because that just runs nicely. I also concentrate on the servicing aspects and looking for any bad earth that might be the reason that charge light is showing up there. Now, first of all, let's get the airbox lid off. And this air filter actually looks virtually new. I don't think I need to change that. So I'm not going to. Because every pound I spend on repairing this car is a point off my overall score. So that can stay as it is. Whoops. One job done. I'm gonna pull the pl spark plugs out now and see what state they're in. Now, working on the assumption that the spark plugs are under here because that's where the wires go, it's a lot like working on a Rover T-Series or a K-Series, actually. I guess it's that similar kind of era, really, isn't it? Now, what do you reckon these plugs are gonna look like? You reckon fresh as a daisy, just changed before the car was laid up, or rusty and horrible and scary looking? Bit coked up, but then it's been running idling only for ages. So I'm get the uh, wire brush and smooth it over. I couldn't find my wire brush, I've no idea where it's gone. So uh, probably the least good alternative 
the wire brush off an angle grinder, but it kind of does the same thing. Actually, these are pretty manky. I mean, that said, it didn't actually struggle to start at all. The thing did just fire into life instantly. Cute. That's a long way down into the block. I reckon someone's spent a bit of time and money looking after this car. I mean, imagine with only 39,000 miles on it, it probably still was going to the main dealer for, for service. I actually found, haven't found the book yet, so. You know what, yeah, I will change these. I was thinking maybe I could rescue them, but no, I'm gonna put fresh ones in tomorrow. But I'm so glad about that battery because that means I haven't got to spend time investigating which sensor is at fault, spending money on a potentially very expensive sensor when for the purposes of the, um, the, the test, the, um, what we call it, the, um, the challenge, I could actually use this stolen uh, Mercedes battery. I just need to work out why it's not charging. That binging is so annoying. While the engine's running and it's not charging, I'll quickly check all the lights work. So, we have tail lights and apparently fog lights as well. I'll look for the button for that in a second. We have side lights and, and front fog lights apparently as well. Uh, let's look for the off button for the fogs. Oh, here we go. The fog light buttons are here and here. That's interesting. Let's try dip beams. Yep, we have dip beams. Well, let's try main beams. This is a push or a pull, no? This is, well, that's the uh, washers. Hang on. It's the right-hand stalk for everything on the lights. That's unusual. Just realized this is a right-hand indicator as well. How curious, I'll tell you what, I'll hit hazards as well, so we can check that's working too. One hazard, two hazard, main beam, main beam, three hazard, four hazard. Check around the back. Yeah, we seem to have a full set of lights. For 200 quid, this is turning out to be quite a good car really. As it transpires, I've got a lot less mechanically to do to this car than I thought I have. So I'm going to concentrate on making it look vaguely pretty. Um, it looks a lot better on the camera than it does in real life. And to be honest, it looks like it's got quite a decent shine to the paint. This is, I guess, looks actually quite a decent paint job. So I'm going to get some uh, Ultimate Compound and give a bit of a black to the bonnet, see if I can make the bonnet look a bit super shiny. And also this front area here is a bit tired. So, uh, it's apron, grill, I don't know. What are we going to call that? It's definitely night time early this time of year, isn't it? Just went inside to get a quick cup of tea and come out and it's pitch dark again. The half of the bonnet you can see here has shined up really nicely. I'm gonna give it another go in a minute and then do the half as well, because that's nowhere near as nice. But uh, yeah, that's made a big old difference, which you'll see in the morning. Um, so a cool thought just occurred to me regarding the battery light. I haven't actually checked the alternator by checking the voltage on the battery while it's running. 12.54. 12.23, that's... Let's try it with the lights on. I don't think the alternator's working properly. Oh, that's not good. Okay, just did the rev test again, sure the neighbours are loving me. Um, and it was rising up to 12.4, 12.5, so it is generating power. It's gonna be a bad earth somewhere in that case then, isn't it? I'll be honest, I've got no idea what time it is now. Quite late, I think, and I'm sorry to my neighbours, but I've been polishing and polishing uh, after the ultimate compound cut. Then I gave it a quick blast over with some old polish that I had in the cupboard that I needed to use up to chuck some polish on there. And now it actually looks, to, apart from these scabby bits on the plastic bumper at the front, and the scabby bit where the paint has kind of crinkled on the boot where it was under the green stuff for so long on the back, it actually looks really quite nice. It's fairly... It's pretty thick, tough paint on this car. I'm pretty impressed. Well, it's two left power tools, but it's okay for a bit of hard labor. 80 grit on a block. Let's see what comes off. It might just be easier to do that, probably. Yes, it's easier to just pull chunks of paint off. This is the worst side of the two. Oh, that's horrible and bubbled and nasty. It's only surface rust, it hasn't gone through anywhere. 
There are some who would pay for this kind of patina on their cars. I'm not one of them. Right, I'm just gonna smother on some oops, rust killer and leave that for a few minutes. With possibly the worst paintbrush I've ever seen. It's gonna raid my son's paintbrush box and get some better ones actually. Yeah, this is a, an old dead paintbrush which has had hammerite on it. It's just kind of scraping it on there rather than actually brushing it in. Well, I'm glad I washed this car last night and sprayed a bit of zinc onto the arches first thing this morning because it's now raining. The camera position will be fixed inside the garage from now on because I don't want the camera to get ruined. But I think you'll agree, look at the way this is beading up on here. This has actually made a massive improvement to this car. I mean, ignore these scabby bits. I've got some old paints in the garage. I'm sure I've got something that's a close-ish match and I might have a stab at that later on. But first of all, I'm gonna service it. I'm gonna disconnect the battery because a friend of mine is a mechanic suggested last night that because it's been running on a low battery for a while and sat for so long it might have just you know need to reset the computer so if i disconnect the battery for a while while i do everything else that might be enough to get the battery light to go off it's now half past 10 um the mot is booked at three o'clock so i'm going to service this check all the connections and hopefully it's going to go through the mot in a couple of hours so first off let's disconnect the battery oh fortunately i've got my rather lovely big heavy duty jack which will make lifting this car up no bother at all I rather hope this is the jacking point as it looks like it is this thing is epic I'll link this I'll find a link and put it in the uh, description below but this is making my life so much easier having this thing around I think it goes without saying that even though I've got the monster jack over there, I'm still putting an axle stand under it just in case. Because even though the jack I'm sure is pretty solid, I've no idea how good the floor I've jacked into is. Unfortunately, the um, oil sump plug is actually quite easy to find. Just don't know what size socket it takes. Oh, first guess, 17. Ah, oh, it's broken free, that's good. Now, you can buy expensive uh, tools or trays within this. You can cut the side out of an old can. Both work well. Oh, damn, dropped a thing in there. Bother. For years I struggled with uh, getting oil filters off. And I used to just get a screwdriver and hammer it through the side and then wrench it off. It worked well, but it was really, really messy. Eventually I bought one of these things, which is a little grippy thing. You just stick it on your ratchet. It tightens up as you go around. It tightens and tightens and tightens and unscrews the thing. It's genius. This was ridiculously cheap. It's about three pounds, I think, from Euro car parts because it was um, on a trade account. <laughs> now, I did make one boo-boo, you probably saw. I dropped the oil sump plug into the oil. So, uh, let's go diving. I really don't like this. Yuck. <clears throat> Yuck, 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 and more extra yuck for good measure. It even feels oily through the gloves. Car's back on solid ground. And it hasn't gone through the jacking point. That's still in the same shape, which is a win. Now we can focus on the top of the car again. I picked this thing up like mega, mega cheap years ago. Well, a couple of years ago anyway, um, I think it was in Halfords, on their shelf of dirt cheap stuff and it was only a few pennies and I thought, you know what, that saves me learning how to pour oil properly. So even if you think you do it properly, sometimes you don't and you've got an oily engine. Now the motor factors all say this car takes 5W40, but the forums and the owners club, they all say it takes 10W40 and the motor factors are all wrong. So okay, I'm going to go with the owners club, who I'm guessing know a fair bit about this car. And apparently it takes about three litres as well. Do you know what, I actually think this is easy without the, uh, the funnel. So I'm hitting the mark anyway. It's only that first glug with a new bottle that tends to go a bit wayward. That should be three litres. Let's give it five minutes just to settle. And see where we go. And next up, I've got to have the battery secured for the MOT. Um, I've no way of acquiring a Hyundai Coupe Generation 2 um, battery restraint strap in the next three hours 
I don't know of any in Breakers Yards near me. And I've ordered one on eBay, it won't be here for a week. So I'm gonna have to do a quick bodgery gar version. As long as it is restrained, that counts. So cable ties, it is. Oh, that's a millimeter too short. Dead spider, more dead spiders. Damn it. Okay, I'm gonna call that secure. I wasn't gonna bother changing the spark plugs, but to be honest, it's only a tenner and it's gonna give it a bit more poke on the track. Oh, it's ratchet interesting. It's like a, we call it torqued oil cap. As I was saying, it's only a tenner, more power on the, on the track, better emissions with the MOT test this afternoon. So uh, it's a win-win. I don't actually know what the um, gap is meant to be on these spark plugs, so I'm gonna measure the old one. I don't know if these are correct or not, but they was running quite well, so I'm gonna assume it was right. This engine is used in the Accent and a bunch of other cars around the world. And so I guess they've designed it to make it really easy to be worked on by anyone. And it got little arrows under the HT leads, which show where to route the leads to which connector. Right, let's see what the dipstick says. Wee. Dip dipstick says twang. That is bang on in the center of the two marks. So I'm gonna call that good. And now this can be returned from whence it came. I will give this a proper clean up at some point soon. Okay, change of plan on the fuel filter because it looks a little bit like it's been cross-threaded into the top of the thing. So I'll take it with me when I have to go to the MOT and ask the garage if they can change it for me. They may be able to, they may not. We'll see where it goes. But right now I've just reconnected the battery and I'm gonna see if this will run. Hey, smooth as you like. Battery light is still on though. Holding it 12 point, oh, it's lower than yesterday now. That was going up to 12 and a half, it peaked at 12.8. I mean, it should be going to 14 really, so I guess the alternator is just underperforming. It seems to be going up, I wonder if it's just lack of use or something. 12.7, 12.81. It's idling at 13, 13 1. Oh, it's dropping, it's dropping, it's dropping. No, it's settled at 12 point, well, just under 12.8, which it was only at 12.2 yesterday. And the light's gone out, yes! I think it's just lack of use. If it's been sat for so long, yeah, needed a kick up the bum to get it going again. Well, that's cool. Another free fix. Nothing's on fire. <laughs> Nothing's falling out the bottom. Seems to rev quite happily. It's now resting at 12.3 and the lights got, and the uh, warning light's gone out on the dash. The original battery is on charge in the garage. It's holding just under 12 volts, but I'm gonna leave it on there for a couple of days and see if that will just boost it up a wee bit. Oh, I'm happy with this now. The car's getting better and better. It's gonna be a struggle to sell this thing. Windscreen wipers, because those are not looking clever. These are possibly the worst wipers I've seen in a while. If you want a triangle of doom, you've come to the right place. More for my scrap pile. I didn't mean to buy the expensive posh wiper blades, but I ordered them on the phone at Euros and they just automatically gave me the posh nice wiper blades, especially not when I need a new wiper blade for the Merc. And I would go and spend the money on the posh nice wiper blades for that one, not the one I'm gonna sell in a few weeks time. Considering this has lived outside for absolutely years, barring that bumper and the rear boot paint, it's an astonishingly good condition. Things like the, the wipers haven't gone all corroded and manky. See if this works. Uh huh. Oh, the wipers don't work. Okay, that's an issue. Hmm. Let's go look for a fuse. Right. Oh, good. It's all in Japanese. HLP high blur fruit fog radfan acon tail one blower igan tail two wiper. Fair few spider webs in here. Right. I've just been squirreling around looking for another fuse box because. I can't really test um, that relay. That appears to be okay. Oops, it's been on the floor. That appears to be okay. Uh, and that appears to be okay as well. I couldn't get the um, 
these pin tester pins into the thing, so I've cut some little bits of wire and put them in, see if anything gets voltage. No. One of my favourite all-purpose tools, second only to gaffer tape, is electrical contact cleaner. And there are no end of problems that it can solve with this stuff, especially if a car's been sat a long time and dirt has got into it. Oh, come on, get some more out there. Dirty connections cause all kinds of issues on a car that has been sat a while. So I'm just gonna give this a little dousing on all the fuses, contacts, relays, just through the switch binnacle. Um, while I've got it out, I'm gonna give the uh, plug on the back of the alternator a little squirt as well, just cause it really doesn't hurt to do it. And if there's any dodginess in there, it will clear it off for me. This stuff really does fix almost any problem with electrics. I want to go. Fix. I saw this the other day and I was massively excited, but I couldn't make it work on camera on, on demand. I figured it out now. Hold that. Electric aerial. This car is pillarless and it has an electric aerial. If only it had pop-up headlights, I could never sell it. I've also managed to get the uh, ashtray open at last and get access to the lighter socket, which has never been used. This thing is pristine. Uh, it looks like someone has had a go at opening it before because there are a few marks in the plastic and the ashtray doesn't sit quite flush. But there was this big key for a gate sitting in there, like, locked vertically so the thing wouldn't move. So with a gentle use of my uh, trim tools, I was able to get into it, push that to one side and free it. I haven't oops, yet, however, been able to get any progress on the cup holders, which I would really like to be working before I go and do any long distance driving in this thing. Anyway, it's getting there. I've now got an hour and a half to the MOT test, and I think everything's working. This is what is known as an invisible repair for blind people. It's had uh, rust killer, zinc rust proofing spray, bit of primer, and then a can of red that I happened to find in the garage, which is close enough. I'm just quickly going to put some gaffer over that rough bit and spray that in the red as well so it's not an MO2 fail on a rough patch. Well, it's shiny, there are no sharp edges, it's been serviced. The only thing that's going to give me any concern is if the wipers decide to play up when he's doing a test, but then I can tap it and show him it's working so I can get an advisory on that one at worst, or the emissions because I've got no control over that, but fingers crossed. Everything's good. Let's go. To be continued.